So, as you know, the third and final presidential debate takes place in just six days. Fox News anchor Chris Wallace will moderate. He is revealing his questions will cover six topics. Though not necessarily in this order, debt and entitlements, immigration, the economy, the Supreme Court, foreign hotspots, and fitness to be president. A lot to pack in. Where will he go first, we wonder? We will see. Howard Kurtz is Fox News media analyst and the host of Media Buzz. Howard, good to see you this morning. Good morning. So thoughts on that, first of all. Well, the third debate was always going to be crucial because it's the one closest to the election. Now I think the importance is on steroids because it will have to be dealt with. The latest mounting allegations of groping and unwanted kissing against Donald Trump in outlets like the New York Times and People magazine. And the WikiLeaks disclosures drip, drip, drip against Hillary Clinton. And they're going to, both candidates are going to run into Chris Wallace, who by wide acclaim is considered one of the best interviewers in the business. I thought this long before I came to Fox News. He has a very blunt but civil style of asking questions, and he is very good at pinning down candidates. I think one of the reasons he was picked was because of the performance that he turned in with Megyn Kelly and Brett Baer in the GOP primary debates. Absolutely, and I'm sure the solid questioning that he does on Fox News Sunday um, as well. So mm -hmm. we're going to all look forward to that, to be sure. Here's a, here's a soundbite from Donald Trump talking about the Commission on Presidential Debates. Let's watch. That so-called Commission on Presidential Debates, the head guy used to work for Bill Clinton. Did you know that? I just found that out. The head guy worked for Bill Clinton. Oh, yeah, yeah, what a rigged deal this is. But, but here's the story. I have no respect for that group, by the way. I have none. It sounds good. Presidential commission, give me a break. Because we're dealing against a very dishonest system. So is that criticism fair? Ay, ay, ay. Ay, Mike ay, McCurry, ay. who Trump is referring to, is indeed a former White House press secretary for Bill Clinton, but he is the co-chairman of the commission. The other co-chairman, as you know, is Frank Ferenkopf, a former chairman of the RNC. So it's a fair and balanced commission, which for the first time in the 20-year history of Fox News, picked moderators not only from CNN and NBC and ABC and CBS, but one from Fox. So I'm not quite sure uh, why Trump is uh, upset with the commission. Yeah, um, understood. All right, let, let's talk about Donna Brazil because yesterday we reported that one of the questions that was asked of Hillary Clinton in a primary town hall sounded quite a bit like uh, a question that she had sent an email about and, you know, made in reference to, well, sometimes I get a look at the questions ahead of time. But yesterday, later, Howard, it mm -hmm. came out that, in fact, there was a verbatim, it was verbatim, the version that was in uh, an email of hers. Flesh this out for us. Well, you know, I was willing to give Donna Brazil the benefit of the doubt. I spoke to her. She said she was flabbergasted that she never got any questions from CNN. But now we learn that the co-moderator of that town hall debate last March with both Clinton and Bernie Sanders uh, was Roland Martin. And that he had sent an email with, among the questions he was going to ask, was one on the death penalty. And again, the wording was almost precise to what Donna, Donna Brazil, who was a CNN contributor at the time, as well as vice chair of the, of the uh, DNC, sent to the Clinton campaign saying, here's one that I'm worried about. So she could have gotten it from Roland Martin. Uh, this does not look good for her. It does not look good for CNN. And it adds to the perception out there that there is a certain coziness between some members of the mainstream media, commentators, yeah. journalists, and others. I mean, and shocking. The I mean, nobody campaign. should have any access to those questions. It, you uh, know, yeah. the American people expect a, a very fair process and that everybody comes in there with the same amount of, of you know, understanding of what, what could come at them, which is anything, basically, within the confines of, of the subjects that are discussed. Um, I want to get your thoughts on the New York Times, because Donald Trump says that he is suing them, that the stories that they printed about these two women are uh, very thin in terms of the substantiation. Well, I don't think we'll ever see this lawsuit, because that would open Donald Trump up to discovery. And look, these are two women who are telling their stories on the record, no anonymous sources. The Times did talk to other people who they had confided in either months ago or even years ago. At the same time, I think it's fair to question, why is this coming out now? Uh, you know, why we have these women, we have the People magazine uh, writer with a first-person account of being uh, the recipient of an unwanted kiss uh, and advance from Donald Trump. It, it does sort of raise questions about the timing. And, of course, given the nature of this and coming after the Access Hollywood tape in which, and the debate in which Trump told Anderson Cooper he did not, he may have engaged in locker room talk, but didn't actually do these things, this is going to, I think, dominate the media coverage for the next couple of days. The story, I can't, I can't know whether the New York Times story is, is, is accurate and whether these women are, in fact, telling the truth. But there are so many women now telling versions of this that 
the Trump campaign is going to be forced to respond. And, of course, is probably going to blame the Clinton campaign, although there's no evidence that I know of at this point the Clinton team had anything to do with these stories. It's interesting. We talked to Jerry Falwell earlier, and he said he had a talk with Donald Trump last night on the phone, and Donald Trump told him that he has emails that will prove that the women are not telling the truth. So um, I've asked the campaign about that, and that uh, may be the next shoe to drop in some of this. So, Howard, we will Look see. Look forward to seeing that. Thank you very much.